telling you uh, who I am. <laughs> and uh, I've already said a little bit about who I am. Uh, a middle-class Brazilian. Uh, my father was a public attorney in Rio at a time when the salary of public attorneys was quite low. Uh, I was trained as a computer engineer in Sao Paulo and took my PhD uh, in computer science at uh, UC Berkeley. For about 22 years, I had several jobs in the computer sector in Brazil. Uh, research engineer, uh, policy maker, and as I said, for six years I had my own company, uh, a very small computer manufacturer in Rio. And after that, I was, uh, during four years, the, the president of COBRA, uh, a state-owned computer manufacturer in, uh, also in, in Brazil. In 1990, uh, a new radical and very corrupt and neoliberal government took office in, in Brazil. It was uh, the caller uh, president, and he, he resigned. He was actually ousted because of corruption. And uh, the local computer industry policy, after a period of success for mini computers, was corrupted and failing for the microcomputers. I had the desire to return to an academic life then from August uh, 1990 to July 1992, uh, I was a visiting research fellow at the New School for Social Research in New York. Uh, that was when I made a firm turn towards the social sciences. In uh, 1995, I finally returned to a full academic position at the, University of, uh, at the Federal University of Rio de Janeiro. Uh, personally, uh, I had uh, two or three uh, stable relationships, two kids, two granddaughters, and one more to come in February. And uh, for me, uh, it's, it's a great honor to be here, and I thank Kavita so much for this uh, opportunity. And uh, I, I told you... Uh, who am I? Because I think that's important to situate my work, not just to satisfy your curiosity <laughs> about. <laughs> and uh, what's my motivation? Uh, I try to see myself as a constructor of knowledge. I think that the simplest text that we produce is political and is an intervention. There are different degrees of consciousness and explicitness different options according to place and time, but there is no way that one can escape the political. One's work all, will always reinforce previously installed situations or weaken them, and there is no way one can avoid that. So any work interferes with distribution and is, uh, constantly, uh, and is consequently political. In, in the other hand, one cannot foresee all the possible ways that her work is going to be used, but I believe that that does not mean that one is not making political choices. My ambitious motivation is to construct knowledges that will serve as tools for empowering people who live in the very complex and diverse unity called Latin America, and especially in Brazil. And I deal with or start from issues of science and technology, particularly the effects of scientific and technological facts and artifacts as they are translated to these regions. In general, two ecological questions are involved. How many are we? How are we going to live together? What, is that a mask? you are likely <laughs> to be thinking about this. And uh, of course it's a mask. <laughs> yeah. um, it's very hard to capture and define motivations or desires. Who knows? Maybe my motivation is that to see myself as taking this sort of mission makes my parents or my kids proud of me. <laughs> 
But that does not make the mask false. I can frankly say, maybe with a bit of naivete, that I have very seriously put on this mask for the last more than 30 years. Uh, a bit about Brazil and uh, the historical process, the participation of many men and few women from Europe, from Portugal in the beginning, in the occupation of the colonies, vast territory that was to become Brazil, led to a peculiar col colonization process. According to Darcy Ribeiro, Brazilians were first of all configured as a new people, one that was not Portuguese or European or colonizer because their mothers were Indian, native, colonized, but were not Indians because their fathers were Portuguese. Similarly, uh, Gomes, analyzing the colonization process in Brazil, wrote about the peculiar, and I quote, the peculiarities of this process in which the colonizer created the colonizing, uh, the colonizer created the colonized in his, his own image, making the colonized, up to a certain point, his equal. Psychologically, the colonized and the colonizer did not see themselves in their roles. What am I aiming at? Uh, at this point, uh, and maybe especially for this audience, it is important to say that uh, we start aiming at things that we at least have a glimpse of and that will depend not only on our eye but also on what we, we have in a tard sense and on when and where we are in a broad sense, our time and space. I am convinced that what I am going to say here is important for Latin American collectives, but I do not know what its relevance is for other collectives. Instead of using the words colonizer and colonized with their historical specific variations in meaning, I will seek another meaning here. I associate colonization with an asymmetry, asymmetry that can be found at all moments in micro or macro instances in the constant construction of the so-called global modern world. In general terms, this asymmetry permits the identification, always provisional, of those who are capable and feel a greater propensity to establish the rhythm of modern constructions in contrast to those who are perceived as being more compelled or inclined to follow their rhythm. Though who are considered, those who are considered to be dominant as opposed to those who are dominated. I do not see the colonizer-colonized dichotomy as an opposition between entities with well-defined frontiers, but as a tension. And I try to problematize it in the networks that link heterogeneous entities, objects, people, institutions, practices, uh, facts. The way I configure it, the colonizer-colonized tension may resonate with and in diverse instances become similar to many contemporary tensions, such as those between North and South, Europeans and non-Europeans, Black and White or Indian, or even between the sexes. Mm. In the 80s, uh, Europeans and Americans, uh, oh, it went, to, it went a little bit further than I thought. <laughs> uh, European and American anthropologists entered the laboratories using knowledge construction techniques that they had developed to study the culture of so-called uh, primitive communities in order to study how scientific knowledge is producing during the daily routine, routine in laboratory work. These new directions led to the development of understandings that were signific significantly different from those provided up, by, up to then by the sociology, philosophy, and history of science regarding technology and scientific truths as, uh, and its universality uh, and uh, neutrality. 
Um, I believe that these, these new directions can be appropriated in order to favor Latin Americans in their negotiations with the colonizers. And the last devil, the dominant practice of meaning, and I refer here to Viveiros de Castro, in the analysis and explication of, of the way that uh, technical scientific facts and artifacts reach Brazil, enacts the so-called diffusion model with the associated notion of impact and its powerful mechanistic uh, appeal. The diffusion model is well studied and its limitations are denounced in the STS field. In Brazil, this diffusion model disseminates the belief that scientific and technological facts and artifacts travel as isolated entities from the West to Brazilian locales, uh, holding their uh, privilege of universality and uh, neutrality. However, there are many uh, movements in the world that are not taken into account by the diffusion model. Um, controversies uh, nearly always arise when a proposition that might or might not become a fact is formulated. A proposition that is the enunciation of a network and of a certain disposition that juxtaposes heterogeneous elements, let us say, things, narratives, and people. A proposition or enunciation of a disposition always defines uh, relations uh, in its own space and time. Uh, when Xi Wei took that sheet of paper here, and he said that if he took a marker, and uh, would make points and relations, and that would be actor network theory. And then he made uh, U and, uh, and made a whole. Uh, if we have the idea of flux of, and flow, the idea I, how I treat it is uh, you, you can, as there is a temporality, a constant and a permanent movement, you can put the U or you can put the formatted uh, knowledge, you can put the ne network back there, and so you get back the flux, the flux. You, get, you can reverse the, the, the situation. And um, I, I, I think I'm going to skip this. I, I, brought, I had brought here uh, just a, a, a quick uh, uh, part of the film A Beautiful Mind. Uh, uh, the biography, inspired in the biography of John Nash, where he shows, he, he shows a constellation. And so he shows a form, and we can look at that jest as uh, showing a form in the flux. And uh, we can take seriously the approach that any object, institution, or, or practice is like just like a constellation, because if you think of about where that form is, it, it's, it's in the relations. It's, uh, it's there. It's not imagination, since sailors used it for, for uh, 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 orientation. It can be photographed. But uh, if, if you go to astronomy, for instance, you, it, it's very clear that one of those stars can be very uh, far apart. So, that form is in the relation. And so it's, uh, we can look uh, alternatively uh, either the proposed test or explicit disposition of heterogeneous elements allow the proposition to become stable, endure, and maintain itself when the controversies it generates are resolved and the proposition becomes an obdurate fact although always in a provisionary and approximate manner in the world of constant flux, or else the, proposition, the proposed disposition does not resist. The network that has been enunciated breaks down and the proposition crumbs, crumbles into fiction. Why, I'm sorry because I can't speak very uh, quickly, not even in Portuguese. <laughs> 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 so, uh, so why they move within space and time and conform to fact or fiction, the propositions are modified and are translated, transferred. 
though translations transfers uh, through tra translations transfers, the controversies are always resolved locally in a way that ensures that the resulting facts and artifacts are not the same and are not independent of place and historical period, space and time. There are no universal neutral facts. In this flux, where there is only movements, verbs, if you wish, um, it is possible to baptize a stable configuration, a constellation, give it a name, make it an entity when it is sufficiently obdurate. This is an ontological performance that creates theories, facts, artifacts, and ideas. They are all nouns, like nouns. They are configurations, forms that, we can, that can be identified, pointed, and baptized in, in the flux. Negotiations can only happen within a frame of reference that will always involve framing and uh, overflow. A metrology can be developed by comparison of inscriptions. This ontological performance creates a version of reality. Uh, Actor network theory enacts a different ontological character for those for technical science, uh, in the sense that it's not only it not only describes I mean science not only describes but also actively participates in the creation of facts and artifacts that inhabit the world. As a result, at network theory opens up possibilities of lines of flight from the provinces that configure on, and are configured by the diffusion model in, in Brazil. So much for actor network theory. Uh, I'd like now to give you a few examples of lines of flights, uh, not the ones that uh, I will come up with in more towards the end, but just to, to give you uh, uh, an idea of uh, of what uh, I have in mind. Okay. Well, let's say I'll, I'll take just a couple of them. Uh, the frame of reference is a mathematic class in Rio de Janeiro. The teacher, colonizer, gives an example of a <laughs> <laughs> of a 69-year-old lady athlete who had swum for a third of her life. The class's frame of reference demarks a territory in which it is implicit that the students colonized will ask and conclude that the lady athlete swam for 23 years of her life. But when a student takes a line of flight from the class's frame of reference and asks, how many medals did she win? I heard this story in, in the radio, in, in, uh, on the radio in, in Rio, and the teacher was complaining about the student. Um, a poor woman colonized who lives in a, in a slum, in a shanty town uh, in, in Rio, wins a prize of about 3,000 uh, reais, and a TV station goes to her hut to interview her. The journalist colonizer, asks, what are you going to do with the prize money? The woman replies, I'm going to buy a television. The camera takes a 360-degree uh, uh, shot out of the whole hut. The journalist asks, but you don't have a refrigerator. The woman retorts, I don't need a fridge to preserve the kind of food I eat. Her reply detorialized implicit and moral pre-agreements of or frames of rationality related in this case to consumption needs seen from the immediate perspective of more educated people. Fridge should come before television. I have three 
four more uh, ideas. I don't know how offensive <laughs> this is, <laughs> but uh, I, I, I will skip them. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you, you, you cannot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the common ones are right. <laughs> Because I'm worried about getting to the end and have some time for discussion. I'll give you five more minutes. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. Well, I in, in the in, in the material that you have, there there are there there are I think four papers, but in two papers you can see some about these cases of uh, cloning computers. That was something I did. Uh, uh, some years ago, uh, both the familiar, which is a, a program of assistance for families in uh, in uh, in Brazil, and um, and multimistura, and I'm going to to talk about this last one, the the program of uh, multimistura, which is a, a nutritional, uh, and uh, I'm going to talk about nutrition and limits of relativism in now. Uh, I take, I take the historiographic texts as historiographic inscriptions, in the sense that all these that the sentences that you uh, you cannot see there, it's, uh, uh, they they are they have been I I've, I've taken them from uh, texts, and so I look at them as inscriptions that were made by an instrument, a historian, and. Uh, in, in contact, in relation to what he is uh, uh, telling and what he is describing. And uh, I'll, I'll read this for you. In, uh, and that's, that's the so, uh, uh, juxtaposition of inscriptions made by uh, historians. I treat these inscriptions as, uh, let's say, as a physicist would treat uh, the inscription of, uh, uh, like, uh, uh, Sharon Troik says that she is uh, standing in the, uh, up in the uh, bubble uh, camera and she can see the, the descriptions. In the mid 70s, a pediatrician called Clara Brandão, I'll call her Claire, observed a drastic, a drastic reduction in the sufferers from diarrhea among malnourished, malnourished children in the 13 day care centers in. in 13 daycare centers in Santarém, Pará. It's a very poor region in the north of Brazil. This had been achieved after experiments uh, had been carried over a three-day period with a nutritional supplement obtained from bran, the dark, dark leaves, as well as other ingredients such as seeds and eggshell powder. By conducting interviews with local population to gain more knowledge of their eating habits, she began examining the local produce in, in the search for alternative foods uh, that had high nutritional value and were not a part of the regular diet of the population. As a result, Claire became influential through the spread of the use of the multi mixture as, she, as the product obtained from these uh, alternative foods came to be known. In 83, she was honored at the uh, 23rd Brazilian Pediatric Congress and recognized by both the uh, Pediatric Society of Bahia and uh, the Brazilian Pediatric Society. In 84, a consultant appointed by the United Nations to evaluate the nutritional value of multimistura of multi-mixture, uh, wrote a favorable report. In its work in the area of basic social assistance, the Children's Pastoral Service of the National Bishops Conference uh, began to disseminate and give national prominence to the practice of using multi-mixture. In 89, awareness of what uh, mixture had to offer increased even more with the appointment of Claire and her husband by the health ministry in, in Brasilia. 
However, in 1990, the Federal Board of Nutritionists pointed out several technical and conceptual errors in a leaflet written by Claire and argued that the information in it needed to be proved by scientific research. The board also requested the health minister to how, and I quote, how to the release of the leaflet, uh, alimentação alternativa, and to make necessary amendments. Yet in 1992, the potential use of multi-mixture in a convalescence of sick patients and the maintenance of the nutritional well-being of children and pregnant women were recognized by the National Institute of Diet and Nutrition. Although it was stressed that there was a need for more in-depth evaluation. In 1994, two university researchers uh, wrote, uh, I have their names, but they, they, they are complicated, Jaime, Amaya, Farfan, and Ilda Torin, uh, wrote a technical report which triggered off a campaign with the aim of undermining the claims of multi-mixture multi and issued a warning of the dangers of using a diet composed of elements whose effectiveness was questioned by the results obtained in the research that they had carried out. From the beginning of the 90s until 2002, and continue until 2008, many studies concluded that even consumer, when consumers of this product were compared with other children in control groups that had not been given the multi-mixture, and when the, an analysis of its ingredients was carried out together with experiments with animals, multi-mixture was not found to have the nutritional, dietary, or even hygienic qualities that ought to be pre present in a compound food capable of having the effects claimed by Claire. In 2006, uh, Children's Pastoral Service was awarded the Opus uh, Prize from the Opus Prize Foundation and the Catholic University of Notre Dame, Indiana, in, uh, in the US, that granted the value of $1 million to people or organizations that unite entrepreneurship and faith in their work and who are committed to the profound transformation of social problems such as injustice, poverty, hunger, illiteracy, and disease. So the, the, the head of the pastoral organization uh, Zilda Arnis, uh, she, she's very much welcome. She, she died in, in Haiti in the, in, the, in the earthquake. But she's very much well connected with the Catholic Church and the brother of one of the, the important uh, archbishops in, in Brazil. She won this prize of one million dollars. Um, in contrast, the Children's Pastoral Service has ceased to allow its business identification number to be used by open multi-mixture factories, both because of the results of the research discussed above and the consequent need for additional work to be done by leaders in the community in order to make multi-mixture compliant to standards. In October 200, uh, 2006, Claire started, uh, stated that they have, uh, they have already advised me advised me that I must now play a clandestine role in the government. In 2008, the AABB community program of uh, Banco do Brasil Foundation set up a multi-mixture factory in Bon Conselho, that's in, in Pernambuco, uh, a state in, in the northeast of Brazil. Uh, 392 municipalities participated in this AABB community program, which included more than 50,000 children and teenagers aged between 7 and 18, and almost 4,000 educators. Claire stated that multi-mixture was being excluded from the school meals to make room for Moussillon from Nestlé and its milky meal. Uh, where the market is shared by uh, Nestle and Procter and Gamble. Uh, it is political genocide, she said, to replace multi-mixture with industrialized foods, said the pediatrician. 
In 2007, the health minister declared that multi-mixture, a composition of bran and other ingredients, had never been adopted as a national strategy for the treatment of infant malnutrition. Moreover, the health minister neither buys nor distributes foods for the public. Thus, there is no foundation to the reports that, uh, that, is, uh, that it was implementing policies to replace multi-mixture with industrialized foods. Uh, none of these phrases uh, uh, is mine. Uh, I took all this from uh, papers uh, from the historiography that uh, is produced in, uh, uh, has been produced by about Multimistura. And so I want to tell you three stories based on, on this. Um, first story. The first story provides a means of setting out a reduced ontological framework by means of which one can epistemologically distinguish in a radical way between science and belief, and wisdom and ignorance. In its initial phase, Claire, uh, Claire's project was spontaneously disseminated in daycare centers and poor schools in an ever-increasing number of Brazilian municipalities in Pará from 74 to the end of the decade. So the, the, the spreading is spontaneous. She counted on the help of volunteers from the Brazilian Le uh, Legion of Assistance. Later in 83, the almost spontaneous adoption of her suggestions by the Children's Pastoral Service brought multi-mixture to thousands of communities. From then onwards, it was also spontaneously adopted by the Banco do Brasil Foundation and um, by 1990, the multi-mixture proposition was being considered for inclusion in a, in a government program that sought to resolve the problem of infant malnutrition in Brazil. It even spread to other countries as well in Latin America. However, eventually, academic groups began to analyze the composition of multi-mixture and concluded that the substance could not have the effects that had been claimed for it. Since these results have not been substantially refuted by other scientists working in laboratories, this conclusion must be accepted as a scientific fact. Multimixture did not pass the reality test, and its nutritional qualities are fictitious and not based on facts. As a result, the ability of Clara Brandão to attract financial support fell dramatically. She has lost her allies, and multi-mixture is no longer regarded as a viable part of a government feeding uh, program. In this first story, there is no question of, relat of relativism being involved in the truth established in the laboratories about the nutritional value of multi-mixture. The initial spontaneous support can be easily explained as resulting from the intervention of Claire and interested activists. Opposed to them are aligned a number of academic groups who can be assumed to be disinterested actors or professionals interested only in discovering the truth and working in their laboratories with nature as their only judge. In this story, the interested activists work in a hiatus in a, uh, of knowledge where people are allegedly ignorant or of or lack scientific knowledge of nutrition so that activists manage to increase their level of influence by exploiting subjective and emotional elements that are present in society, social factors. As evidence of this, is it enough, it is enough to employ feelings of solidarity and compassion by means of photographs, such as uh, this, uh, this photograph was uh, in, um, in the uh, Brazilian, uh, the, the most, uh, the, the large, uh, the, the Brazilian magazine, a weekly magazine with, with the largest audience in Brazil. Um, so that's the first story. But there is a second story. Um, and the second story, 
Our second story sets out a line of flight that can be broadened uh, the scope of uh, ontological space by making claims of symmetry. The establishment of scientific truths about multi-mixture by academic groups with regard to dietary and nutritional questions is not an untainted and isolated process which is not affected by interests. The prospect of multi-mixture being adopted for school meals in a national program involving hundreds, hundreds of millions of reais annually, that, that is equivalent of hundreds of millions of dollars, actually. It's about 1.5, one, 1.6 real for a dollar. Uh, put, uh, puts mixture, multi-mixture in an arena where other actors in the Brazilian food market are already well established. These actors do not fail to have close ties with academic groups, a process that is often encouraged by the government through research funding uh, schemes. The Children's Pastoral Service reached an agreement with large companies in the food sector at the same time as they abandoned the use of moot mixture, and its coordinator, Zilda Arnes, was thanked by being awarded an international grant of $1 million. Many of the academic groups of the professional nutritionists involved come from the south and the southeast regions of Brazil, which are wealthier and offer a climate where there is a solid and well-grounded paradigm that recognizes the necessary link between scientific knowledge and reliable knowledge in opposition to so-called popular beliefs. Nutritionists as a professional group perhaps have a special interest in making out their territory in possible conflicts with doctors, a much more powerful professional group. The second story is more relativist and dialogic and makes it necessary to establish the strong causal links and the classification of each actor for the case in question. In empirical terms, if the historicity of the scientific fact is noted, it becomes relative. The requirement of symmetry can be an ally of Claire but by itself, it's not strong enough to establish new facts. This limit to, re to relativism has a strategic implications for the activists. Scientific knowledge is a powerful enemy, capable not only of describing, but also of creating the objects that it describes. In this way, it creates a version of reality and presents it in universal and neutral terms while only admitting dialogue uh, while only admitting dialogue with a counter laboratory it imposes the weapons of the duel um, i cite here uh, bruno latour about uh, limits of relativism where, where when he says and i i'm not being completely fair with him because this uh, he said that a few, many years ago uh, um, he says that when all scientists agree, the, the historian or the sociologist of science has nothing to do. It's a fact. And so it, it should, they should stop there. Um, nevertheless, for Claire, this limit has a consequence of a strategic character. So uh, how can one think of, or how can one find a line of flight from this limit imposed to relativism by even in the second, that is a well-known story for uh, people in the SCS field, the, the, the requirement of, of symmetry. Uh, how can we uh, find uh, a line of flight from this limit imposed to relativism by the second history of science of uh, multi-mixture? And uh, I, I draw on the work of uh, Peter Piers uh, Vitebsky, and I'll come back to this uh, citation. Freud's reality testing does not actually test reality, but rather tests propositions against a preconceived notion of reality. Similarly, the entire practice of dialogues with the dead, he is talking about the Sora, uh, 
uh, could possibly, though I believe thinly, thin, uh, be interpreted on the assumption that these dialogues are no more than a theatrical stunt. Uh, this, uh, I took the, just this page that I, 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 of the paper, uh, the Vitebsky's uh, paper that is in, in this book uh, of anthropological critique uh, of development. One, one more line of flight allows the activists to survive and possibly make gains away from the ontological territory of the colonizers. Other ontologies may be enacted and define other alternative territories where the weapons of the nutritionist scientists do not have the same effect and where the closure of scientific controversy is a less relevant and determinant factor. Multimixture cannot provide uh, nourishment if it does not contain nutrients. The nutritionists insist but despite this, it continues to, be, to, to nourish children, say the interested layman. Claire collected testimonials from mothers, parents, friends, and volunteers who took part in the multi-mixture program and offered it as uh, anecdotal evidence, evidence that the scientists, far from attempting to refute, have not taken into account and inexplicably uh, set aside, at least for the time being. The existence of anecdotal evidence illustrates the conflict that can be found between the knowledge of the scientific specialist and the knowledge of the layman. This usually depends on specific local conditions. For example, the intimate, intimate rela relationship between mother and daughter which is not and, in fact, cannot be taken into account in general evaluations based on typical circumstances. The key point here is that knowledge of these particular social conditions must come from the people most intimately involved. The people who insist on sticking to the practice of using multi-mixture choose to live a version of reality where the effects of the facts established in laboratories do not have a mobilizing or demobilizing power similar to what is customarily seen in groups that are more aligned to scientific benchmarks. Accounts like the few examples below are commonplace among the practitioners of uh, multi-mixture. A small fraction of them can be found in the testimonial session at uh, uh, the, the site in the internet. And they say things like that. A simple and miraculous mixture that even today continues to save lives. After her son had recovered, Maria Aparecida began helping with the pastoral work and is today a leader in the sector. I do for the other children what they did for him when I needed them. He, she was talking about her son. Another one, the work which we do with so much love is holy. Another one, we want to communicate or better articulate our joy in being able to work in the children's pastoral service. And the best time to express this is when we see a child's smile. Uh, another one, when they are around, they feel fulfilled. They are living a dream. Uh, referring to the presence of girls and boys in, in the program. In my view, there is a corresponding thread between the first, second, and third stories about multi-mixture, uh, and the three respective links uh, between technique and truth in the domains of disease and health, body, mind, and soul, set by Piers Vitebsky in his anthropological critique of development. So I propose there is a corresp this corresponding thread. Uh, in the first story, material forms of psychiatry, technique with little or no dialogue, radical separation of the body from the mind or brain. The second story, 
Freudian psychoanalysis, moderately dialogic technique, body and, body and mind related concept of a spirit free mind. The third story, the Bora uh, for a ceremony, it's a mistake there, uh, highly dialogic technique, body and mind or so related concept of mind or so with spirits. Uh, the article, Mourning and uh, Melancholia, let me see this. The article, Mourning and Melancholia, by Freud, provides the most coherent and influential secular theory about the mental processes associated with death related loss in the industrialized West. The basis of Freud's thera therapeutical, therapeutical uh, model is, and practice is profound. The deceased is no longer a subjective being, and any continued attempt to interact with her or him is therefore based on an illusion. A grief-stricken person, thinking that he, she, or he heard the voice of her deceased or imagined its presence, etc., could be part of what Freud calls normal mourning. But the reality test should soon convince the, the mourner that the deceased no longer exists. It is the recognition of the reality verdict that begins the process of recovery. If this reality verdict is not accepted, it becomes sublimated as a pathological state of melancholia, which is a retreat into a, a hallucinatory psychosis dominated by desire and through which the existence of the deceased is mentally and wrongly kept alive. Dialogue with the psychoanalyst should be designed to help the patient recognize this error. But according to Vitebsky, the Sora do not accept this reality. For them, the deceased continued to exist in absolute terms, although they have to, they have been qualitative transformed. Where Freud, so in that image, the formatted knowledge of Freud can be waived and a new network can, can show up, a new configuration. Um, where Freud contrasts normal and pathological states of mind in the, in the bereaved person, the Sora contrasts benign and aggressive states of mind in the deceased person and are able to locate them in several distinct parts of the landscape. At any moment, the dead might reside in these places according to their, their whims, and the living can find and interact with them when they pass through the landscape. In certain aspects or spiritual forms, the dead care for their descendant and assure the continuity of the lineage. In others, they attack their descendant and cause them to suffer the same diseases which from which they died. The shaman provides a channel through which the living and the dead can enter into a dialogue. These dialogues occur in divinations, healing rituals, and funerals. Here the living and the dead explore the intentions of each other in order to, in order to change them. With the aim of being cured, the living invites the dead to attack him, to enter into a dialogue to discover how uh, the dead feel about him and why they attack him. The living person then tries to persuade the deceased to assume a different, less aggressive state of mind, while the dead, in turn, might try to persuade the living to change something within themselves. Vitebsk states that, it, and I'm almost finishing, Vitebsk states that it would be difficult, at least for an anthropologist, to adopt a meta position from which one could say without disguise that either of these two understandings is an example of ignorance. In actual fact, this proposition seems to lack sense. As he points out, the difference here is not based on observed fact or empirical evidence, 
but rather on inferred explanation. In their metaphysics, practitioners in both traditions seem very certain about what they know and even reinforce this conviction through procedures of verification. Freud talks about reality testing leading to the verdict of reality, which is that the deceased no longer exists. The Sora likewise have ways of interrogating the dead in order to be sure that they really are who they say they are, and not just imposters who have come along to feed on a free sacrifice. In both cases, <laughs> one could uh, argue from outside these beliefs that they are mistaken. Freud's reality testing does not actually test reality, but rather tests propositions against a, pre uh, against a preconceived notion of reality. Similarly, the entire practice of dialogues which, with the dead could probably, though I, he believes Finney, I'm quoting Vitebsky, uh, be interpreted on the assumption that these dialogues are no more than a theatrical stunt. Uh, Vitebsky observes that to understand the link that he makes, and hence the correspondence that we advocate, we need to move a long way from any truth value theory of knowledge, to say nothing of ignorance, towards notions of adequacy, appropriateness, and context. The version of reality from the first story that confines the body to the ontological space inhabited by entities created and stabilized by biochemistry in the laboratory not surprisingly corresponds to the materialistic techniques uh, of the psychiatrist. The proposition of the second story is to understand and promote the success or failure of multi-mixture in terms of scientific facts that may or may not be stabilized on ontological space uh, to, that includes the laboratory and society. This corresponds to the ontology of Freudian psychoanalysis that expands the being by endowing the body with a mind, feelings or so, without a spirit. The third story, which at the very least accepts living with the magic of multi-mixture. I remember yesterday being, people being against magic, but it's another, it was another contest. I could understand what he was saying perfectly. Uh, um, uh, corresponds with the, the Boris shaman ritual, a ritual that creates an ontological space um, inhabited uh, by beings and feelings or souls with a spirit. This opens up a line of flight to escape from the imposed limits to, rela to relativism mar uh, marked out in the second story when this line of flight comes across the, the closure of controversies and confronts the, back block, the, the black boxes of science. Uh, it probably was not clear, but I'm not in favor uh, of uh, you know, a, a radical, completely radical relativism uh, that uh, the actual network theory or uh, these authors can save us from, from that. But it might give this impression by some of the phrases that I've heard written here. Um, and uh, finally, uh, concluding with a focus on my own country, the proposal is that in the diversity of spaces that Brazil is composed of and in each complex colonizer-colonized unity, which may be inhabited by an individual or much larger collectives, uh, the colonizer colonized should forego a centered reality that effectively comes from the West, but in whose name local colonizers seek to speak and act and recognize the legitimacy of a world where the most that can be obtained in is versions of reality that are enacted with a greater or lesser degree of support. This may not seem much but SCS studies provide the theoretical basis that, and that's important because I would not like to be in a position of rejecting 
Uh, and uh, of course, since I'm, I'm bringing STS, and uh, uh, STS comes from, from Europe and, and the US, so it's not a, a question of rejecting knowledge that comes from the West. But this may not seem much, but STS, I believe, uh, STS studies provides the theoretical basis that can enable, and I quote this anthropologist, the descendant of those Negroes, Indians, and Mestizos to dare think that this country is a republic that should be governed by their will as its people, which indeed they are. Thank you. Thank you.